Hello everybody and welcome back to Life Stories. My name is Trent and I hope you're doing awesome as always. Today we got more stories coming at you from reddit slash I don't work here lady. So let's get started. Our first story is titled, My Taxes Pay Your Salary? No, they do not. This happened three years ago, but my friend reminded me of it yesterday, so I thought I'd share. It was in the middle of June, and my first weekend off in quite a long time. I'd been giving my friend a never-ending rain check, promising to teach her to fish. Our schedules finally lined up. Weather's perfect. It's fishing time. We arrive at a local lake. It's the type where you don't need a fishing license, just a pass for the lake. Money goes to the city. We buy our passes from the concession stand and head back to my car to get the gear. I brought three setups, one for me, one for my friend, and another one just in case. It's a really busy Saturday morning, lots of people. We do a mini hike across the lake to get to our spot and get to fishing. Friend learns quickly. We catch a few before the sun's all the way up. We're pumped how well the day is going and decide to take a lunch break when it starts to get hot. At about 11, we take the stuff back to my car. We chill, eat, and hydrate, and head back. While we are walking back, a group of kids break away from their families to follow us around. They were all boys, four of them. Three of them were probably around 8 to 11 years old, and the fourth is maybe six. I'm thinking they just want to watch us fish. And they likely told their parents where they were going, so I don't even think about it. We get back to our spot, but the kids are trying to follow us down the hill. The top of the hill has a trail. If you're careful, you can climb down to reach a small landing that's close to the water's edge. It was stressing me out watching the kids try to climb down. So I yell up to them and let them know about a safer place to watch. Basically, next to us, easier to get to, but there's a gap in between the landings. Once they got down, they decided to have a rock skipping contest. Not exactly polite to do that next to people fishing, but I let it go. Then, these kids decide to have a jumping contest. They're jumping from their landing to our landing, back and forth. There's only a two-foot gap, but if they fell, they'd definitely get hurt. My friend is getting more stressed than me watching them, and makes them promise her to be careful. They said what I probably would have said when I was their age. Fine. Whatever, guys. The ringleader of the group, the oldest, maybe 11, then asks me if they're allowed to fish. I ask them if they have a pass, stupid me and they say yes in unison. I tell them, if you got a pass, you're good to go. Ringleader puts his hand on my fishing pole that I'm holding still and asks if he can use it. I pull away and say, no bud, I'm using it. He picks up my just in case pole without asking and says, what about this one? No, that's mine and I don't want you hurting yourself with it. Little brat gives me an attitude and shouts, well what can I use? I didn't even know what to say at first, but I pulled out Old Faithful. Go ask your parents. It worked, and they immediately left. About 20 minutes later, we hear a large group of people coming down the trail. It's the kids and their family, and the kids are whispering and pointing at me, mostly just the ringleader. A female, a bit older than me, I'm guessing mom, angrily makes her way over to the spot and lays into me. I don't remember everything, but the general consensus is that I'm ungrateful and I need to get shot. Her words. The kids are still close, so I decide to keep it PG. I also have a little issue with my hearing. If something is too loud, I can't usually make out the sound. Like if you're yelling at me, I'm not going to get every word. I explain I can't hear her when she raises her voice. She starts yelling louder. I'm getting nothing. My friend is mortified. I stare at her until there's a break and say, yeah, I didn't get a word of that. She almost starts to go off again when the husband or boyfriend or older brother shouts something at her in another language and she stops. Angry lady says, did you tell these boys they couldn't fish? No, I said just the opposite. She's stunned. Why can't they fish then? They're allowed to fish at this lake. They can fish, I said. They're absolutely allowed to fish here. They just can't use my stuff. Why not? Everyone else here's fishing. The lake is owned by the city. Yup, it sure is. She blank stares for way too long. You need to teach them to fish. Miss, I can't watch all of them. What if they hurt themselves? Yes, you are. My taxes pay your salary. No, they do not. 
Yes, they do. I pay taxes and taxes pay for this lake. And they better not hurt themselves because if they do, I cut her off. You think I work here? I get more blank stares. Miss, I work at place I used to work, doing thing I did while I was there. Even more blank stares. <sighs> I fix computers. I didn't, but it's easier to say that than explain what I really did. I was met with silence. This poor lady looks so embarrassed as it clicks that I'm just a person fishing on their day off, but I didn't even get an apology. No recognition that she was wrong. She just climbs back over the rest of the family as they quietly speak amongst themselves, walking away in their shame. When they're finally out of sight, my friend and I give each other the what the heck just happened look and break into the most beautiful 45 minute session of uncontrollable laughter I've ever had. I mean, a simple misunderstanding is one thing, but telling somebody they need to get shot? What the heck is wrong with people? Moving along, our next story is titled, Karen yells at me for eating our own products. Air quotes. One early morning, I had to wake up early because it's our exams later that morning, so I hurried to go to school. But when I was on my way there, I realized that I didn't have breakfast yet, so I stopped at this local restaurant to get some food. When I was eating my breakfast, a woman entered the restaurant and I made the biggest mistake of glancing at her for a second. Then I noticed her stomping in my direction. As some information, I was wearing a school uniform, which was a white polo and black slacks. I was wearing a jacket, so I didn't think she'd notice. So here is how the conversation went. Hey, you, I want my order. Ma'am, I don't, I don't want to hear any rants from you. Hurry up and take my order. And you should not be eating your own products. That's for customers only. Me, now annoyed because I was running late, Ma'am, I don't work here, and if you want someone to take your order, then go to the- Don't lie to me! I know you work here because you're wearing the same pants as the others! At this moment, the manager heard all her yelling and confronted us. What seems to be the problem here? He is rude to me and doesn't want to do his job. He's also eating this restaurant's products that's only for the customers. The manager glances to me and then glances back to the Karen. But he doesn't work here. That's what I was telling her, I said. Karen then yells at me for how the customer service was bad and how she will inform everyone because she was a blogger. At this point, I was thinking of leaving because I was late. Right when I was at the door, Karen suddenly grabs my jacket and I fall to the floor. At this point, the manager is now mad at Karen for assaulting a customer and he threatened to call the police. Karen then was so angry that she just stormed off. The manager apologizes to me for having to deal with that woman. I was really late and I had to go, so I left and grabbed my stuff. I then saw Karen in the other side of the street mumbling with an angry look on her face. I would have helped her take her order if she wasn't so rude, and I hope to never encounter a wild Karen again. Well, if this Reddit is anything to go by, you may feel that way, but it might be inevitable. It happens to everybody. But then, you can come back and post them here, and I'll read them. Isn't it great? Moving on to our next story with a kind of perplexing title, Lady Gets Mad Over Chutney. Characters, me, and Chutney Lady, CL. So this whole thing was kind of my fault because I'm generally clueless in social interactions with strangers, but I think this qualifies. I was on my lunch break from work one day, prior to social distancing, and went to a large grocery store in the same area of my work. It's a nicer store, not a Whole Foods or anything, but they do have kind of a gourmet aisle. I was perusing this aisle thinking I'd treat myself to something better than a microwave meal. When up walks CL, I didn't notice her at first. Excuse me, she's already angry that I haven't initiated to help. Oh, sorry, I move out of the way thinking she needed something on the shelf in front of me. I back off and look at the goods from afar so she can get her item. CL, with her hands on her hips, I said, excuse me. Was, was there something you wanted to ask me? I'm flabbergasted at this point. Yes, if you can be bothered, where is the chutney? I'm not getting what's going on here, so I just say, um, I don't know. You don't know where the chutney is? As I said, I'm not the best with strangers, so I want this interaction to be over at this point. Ma'am, I don't even know what chutney is. She literally drops her little hand basket in the aisle, huffs, and walks away. 
I'm standing there, shaking my head, confused about what just happened. Then I see a person walking down the aisle to retrieve the dropped basket. Manager of the store, wearing khakis and a nice blouse, with a badge and a lanyard around her neck. And there I am, on my lunch break from my not-the-grocery-store job, wearing khakis and a nice blouse, with my badge and lanyard around my neck. It hits me. I'm the idiot. I was so embarrassed, I fled the store without buying anything and hit up a drive through Look, I'm not gonna front. I love me some chutney. Cilantro chutney? Mwah! Ooh, that's the good stuff. But you don't yell at people over chutney. You can go get some for yourself, go to a nice Indian restaurant, get a little bit of the peach chutney, put it on your rice. Mwah! Ooh, so good. And with that story out of the way, I am now officially hungry. And I also have to wrap up the episode. So, before I do so, I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Life Stories. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you're all staying safe during these times, and I hope to see you guys soon.